Hello there. Welcome to Sumit Academy. I do hope that you have subscribed to my channel. Do subscribe now and press the bell icon too so that you do not miss out on my previous and future videos. And do remember to like this video and share with your friends. In this video, we shall talk about customs duty. But before that, I do realize that this is video number 119 from my Sumit Academy and it can be quite confusing for you to enter my channel and search for a particular video. So here is a complete list of all videos uploaded and the playlist under which they are available on my YouTube channel. Have a look. Are you wondering what is meant by customs duty and why you are forced to pay for that wonderful phone you bought in USA or the gold necklace you got for a bargain in Dubai? Well, customs duty is levied when goods are transported across borders between countries. It is the tax that governments impo impose on export and import of goods. The government uses this duty to raise its revenues, safeguard domestic industries and regulate movement of goods. Every good has a predefined rate of duty that is determined based on various factors, including where such good was acquired where such goods were made and what these goods are made of. Also, anything that you bring into India for the first time should be declared as per the customs rules. For instance, you need to declare the items purchased in a foreign country and any gifts which you acquire outside India. But why do you have to pay? You see, customs duty is beneficial for many reasons. For instance, it ensures a country's economic stability, jobs and environment. It regulates the movement of goods in and out of the country. It keeps a check on restricted items. Curious to know how customs duty is calculated? 
the value of customs duties is computed on ad valorem or specific basis or we can say that the value of customs duties depend on the value of the goods these goods are valued in accordance with the customs valuation determination of value of imported goods rules of 2007 there are two acts which form part of customs law in india namely the customs act 1962 and the customs tariff act 1975 let's have a look at them the customs act 1962 is the basic act for levy and collection of customs duty in india it contains various provisions relating to import and export of goods and merchandise as well as baggage of persons arriving in india the main purpose of customs act 1962 is the prevention of illegal imports and exports of goods the act extends to the whole of the india the other law is the customs tariff act 1975 all goods are imported or exported from india at the rates specified under this act the act contains two schedules schedule 1 gives classification and rate of duties for imports while schedule 2 gives classification and rates of duties for exports in the present act the tariff schedule was replaced in 1986 the new schedule is based on hsn that is harmonized system of nomenclature the internationally accepted harmonized commodity description and coding system let's now move on to the types of customs duties in india while customs duties include both import and export duties but as export duties contributed only nominal revenue due to emphasis on raising competitiveness of exports import duties alone constituted the major part of the revenue from customs duties now what are these import duties the first is basic customs duty all goods imported into india are chargeable to a duty under customs act 1962 the rates of this duty are indicated in the first schedule of the custom tariff act 1975 as amended from time to time under finance acts the duty may be fixed on ad valorem basis or specific rate basis the duty may be a percentage of the value of the goods or at a specific rate the central government has the power to reduce or exempt any good from these duties the next import duty is the additional countervailing duty of customs this is levyable as additional duty on goods imported into the country and the rate structure of this duty is equal to the excise duty on like articles produced in india that is similar articles produced in india 
the base of this additional duty is the CIF value of imports plus the duty levied earlier. Now CIF stands for cost, insurance and freight and is an expense paid by a seller to cover the costs, insurance and freight of a buyer's order while it is in transit. If the rate of this duty is on ad valorem basis, the value for this purpose will be the total of the value of the imported article and the customs duty on it, both basic and auxiliary. The third import duty is auxiliary duty of customs. This duty is levied under the Finance Act and is applicable on all goods imported into the country at the rate of 50% of their value. However, this statutory rate has been reduced in the case of certain types of goods into different slab rates based on the basic duty chargeable on them. Next is education cess on customs duty. An education cess has been imposed on imported goods with effect from 9-7-2004. Then we come to protective duties. Tariff Commission has been established under the Tariff Commission Act 1951. If the Tariff Commission recommends and central government is satisfied that immediate action is necessary to protect interests of Indian industry, protective customs duty at the rate recommended may be imposed under Section 6 of the Customs Tariff Act. The protective duty will be valid till the date prescribed in the notification. Then we have countervailing duty on subsidized goods. If a country pays any subsidy directly or indirectly to its exporters for exporting goods to India, central government can impose countervailing duty up to the amount of such subsidy under Section 9 of the Customs Tariff Act. Then we have another import duty known as anti-dumping duty. Often, a large manufacturer from abroad may export goods at very low prices compared to prices in his own domestic market. Such dumping may be with the intention to cripple domestic industry or to dispose of their excess stock. This is called dumping. This is an unfair trade practice which can have a distortive effect on international trade. Thus, the purpose of anti-dumping duty is to rectify the trade distortive effect of dumping and re-establish fair trade. In fact, anti-dumping is an instrument for ensuring fair trade and is not a measure of protection per se for the domestic industry. It provides relief to the domestic industry against the injury caused by dumping. In order to avoid such dumping, Central Government can impose under Section 9A of the Customs Tariff Act anti-dumping duty up to a margin of dumping on such articles if the goods are being sold as less than its normal value. Levy of such anti-dumping duty is permissible as per WTO agreement. Anti-dumping action can be taken only when there is an Indian industry producing like 
or similar articles. These measures have assumed a great deal of relevance in India in recent times in view of the scenario arising out of unfair trade practices adopted by some of our trading partners like China, which specializes in dumping substandard goods into our country at ridiculously low rates. However, it is always necessary to bear in mind that the anti-dumping action can never be an action based on presumption and vague complaints and only on very rare occasions suomoto proceedings can be initiated. The requisite parameters of law have to be duly complied with and the need to be fully supported and substantiated with facts and figures before any action can be initiated. Anti-dumping in common parlance is understood as a measure of protection for domestic industry. However, anti-dumping measures do not provide protection per se to the domestic industry. It only serves the purpose of providing remedy to the domestic industry against the injury caused by unfair trade practice of dumping. In fact, anti-dumping is a trade remedial measure to counteract the trade distortion caused by dumping and the consequential injury to the domestic industry. Only in this sense, it can be seen as a protective measure. It can never be regarded as a protectionist measure. Continuing with import duties, we then have safeguard duty. The central government is empowered to impose a safeguard duty on specified imported goods if it is satisfied that the goods are being imported in large quantities and under such conditions that they are causing or threatening to cause serious injury to domestic industry. Such duty is permissible under WTO agreement. Safeguard duty is a step in providing a need-based protection to a domestic industry for a limited period with the ultimate objective of restoring free and fair competition. And finally, we have an import duty called National Calamity Contingent Duty. A National Calamity Contingent Duty NCCD of customs has been imposed wide section 129 of Finance Act 2001. This duty is imposed on pan masala, chewing tobacco and cigarettes. It varies from 10% to 45%. NCCD of 1% was imposed on motor cars, multi-utility vehicles and two-wheelers. And NCCD of rupees 50 per ton was imposed on domestic crude oil wide section 134 of Finance Act 2003. There are different rates of good duty for goods imported from certain countries in terms of bilateral or other agreement with such countries, which are called preferential rates of duties. The duty may be percentage of the value of the goods or at specified rate. Let's move on now to export duties. Under the Customs Act 1962, Goods exported from India are chargeable export duty. 
the items on which export duty is chargeable and the rate at which the duty is levied are given in the Customs Tariff Act 1975 as amended from time to time under Finance Acts. However, the government has emergency powers to change the duty rates and levy fresh export duty depending on the circumstances. Next, for exports, we also have cesses. Cesses are levyable on some specified article of exports like coffee, coir, lac, mica, tobacco, the unmanufactured one, marine products, cashew kernels, black pepper, cardamom, iron ore, oil cakes and meals, animal feed and turmeric. These cesses are collected as part of customs duty and are then passed on to the agencies in charge of the administration of the concerned commodities. Let's move on to a few changes in customs duty. In Budget 2019, the government announced a slew of changes to customs duty in order to meet multiple objectives, including promotion of clean energy, curbing non-essential imports, boosting domestic manufacturing, and raising revenue. Customs duty was cut on several inputs to incentivize domestic production and increased on finished products to garner additional revenues. The government had said it was expecting a 19% growth in customs collection to rupees 1.5 trillion for 2019-20. To conclude, we may say that customs duty is a type of indirect tax that is levied on all the goods that are imported to the country as well as some goods exported from the country. The duty levied on the former is referred to as import duty, while that on the latter is referred to as export duty. Any tariff that is introduced on goods across national borders is referred to as custom duty. The duty levied depends on the value of the goods, its dimensions and weight along with a lot of other criteria. While value-based duties are called valorum duties, Quantity-based duties are called specific duties. On the other hand, duties on values plus other factors are called compound duties. Customs duties are computed on a specific or ad valorem basis. In other words, it is calculated for the value of goods. Such value is determined as per the rules laid down in the customs valuation. Determination of value of imported goods, rules 2007. If there are doubts regarding the truth or accuracy of the value of goods, valuation of such item is done through the following method. Let's have a look at that. Rule 4 and 5, comparative value method that compares the transaction value of identical or similar items. Rule 7, deductive value method that uses sale price of such goods in the importing country. Rule 8, computed value method that employs costs related to materials, fabrication and profit 
in the country of production. And rule nine, the fallback method, which is based on the previous methods with an element of higher flexibility. The Indian government has increased the basic customs duty on an array of items that include refrigerators, air conditioners, footwear, washing machines, furniture fittings, tableware, jewelry, and many more. This was done in an effort to shore up the falling rupee and restrict the current account deficit. With the increase in duty, the prices of these goods are likely to rise, dampening their demand, reducing the imports, and then indirectly assisting the domestic manufacturers. In recent years, India witnessed major reforms in the taxation system via digitalization. From income tax to GST, most of the things are now available online. To ensure ease of doing business, the CBIC, the Central Board of Indirect Taxes and Customs, has launched e sanchit which stands for e-storage and computerized handling of indirect tax documents. It enables registered persons to file their customs-related documents online. The e-Sanchit initiative has been made mandatory from March 2017. Only the IceGate registered users can use the eSanchit application by accessing the eSanchit link. As a next step, the CBIC is extending this facility to PGA, which is participating government agencies. I know too many acronyms, isn't it? Well, IceGate stands for Indian Customs and Central Excise Electronic Commerce Electronic Data Interchange Gateway. That is the EC EDI Gateway. The EC and EDI requirements of the Customs and Central Excise Departments are made by IceGate. It is used by traders, cargo service providers, and other clients of the department. These are collectively known as trading partners. Coming back to eSanchit, under this new scheme, hard copies of the uploaded documents are not required to be produced to the assessing officers. The objective here is to minimize the physical interface between the customs agencies and trade and to maximize the pace of clearance. All these measures have been brought in to improve the way business is conducted. The CBIC is continuously trying to bring simplicity, accountability, consistency, and transparency in the process of clearance of all import and export transactions. Well, that's all from me in this video. This video is based on the information freely available on the internet. No originality is claimed for the same. The intention of this video is only to prepare candidates for answering examination questions on the subject. Do like this video and do subscribe to my channel now so that you do not miss out on my previous or future videos. And do remember to share this video with your friends. And if you feel like dropping in a line, I shall always be available at Sumit Academy 20 at gmail.com
Till later then. Cheerio.